Now, a smart home requires a dashboard on which we can see information related to our home. So today we'll be making use of a tablet like this and then we will show our home assistant dashboard on it as well as we will control this tablet using home assistant and then also play some music from home assistant on this tablet. So with this, let's get started. So first thing what we're going to do is we are going to install the fully kiosk browser app on the tablet. So for this, what we're going to do is we are going to first of all, go to the app store and then in the app store, we are going to search for fully kiosk browser. Now here you get a bunch of fully kiosk browsers, but we are going to select the fully kiosk browser and lockdown app and we're going to click on install here. Now after installing this app, we are going to open the app and then afterwards you will be presented with this first screen on which you have to specify the home assistant URL. So in this case, I'm specifying the home assistant IP address along with the port number. And then we are going to keep the full screen mode on and we're going to click on start using fully. Now, once you do that, you will be presented with the home assistant welcome page, wherein you have to enter the username and password for your home assistant. Along with this, we are going to keep the logged in option on and we are going to click on login. Now, once you click on login, you'll be presented with the home assistant dashboard. So this is the simplest thing that we have done right now. That is, we set up the home assistant URL as the start URL for a fully kiosk browser. Now to make full use of this fully kiosk browser app, we need to do some kind of settings here. So for this, what we have to do is we need to swipe a little bit on the left such that we can have this settings panel. Now we are going to click on settings here and let's look at the various important settings that we have. So we have this web content settings, then we have the web browsing settings, then we have this device management settings, power settings, and then finally we have this remote administration settings that we will be making use inside Home Assistant. So let's look at the web content settings here. So here we have the start URL, which is the Home Assistant URL, specifying the IP address and the port number to Home Assistant. We don't have to enter any kind of username and password here. Along with this, we are going to enable this full screen videos such that when we play some videos, it will be shown in the full screen. Now, these are only the settings that we need to do here. Now let's go to the next settings that is a web browsing settings. Now here we are going to enable the pull to refresh settings such that when we pull the dashboard from top, it will refresh the dashboard screen. Now these are the only settings that we are going to do here. Let's go out from here. And now here we are going to look into the device management settings. Now here we are going to enable the keep screen on settings here. If that setting does not work, then you can select the keep screen on advanced settings. Now along with this, we are also going to make sure that we have this unlock screen option enabled here. Now these are the only two settings that you need to do here. Now let's go back from here and next we are going to look into this motion detection settings. Now in this motion detection settings, let's enable first this visual motion detection. And then here, what we are going to do is we are going to select the camera. So by default, it's going to select the front camera. What we are going to do is we are going to set it permanently to the front camera here. Now there are a bunch of other settings that we will look into later, wherein we will be looking at some of the motion detection settings a little bit later. Now, these are the only settings that we are going to do here right now. Let's go back and then we are going to do the final and the most important setting that is remote administration. Now here we are going to enable remote administration and then we are going to set a remote admin password here such that when we connect this tablet to home assistant using fully kiosk integration, we will have to enter this admin password. So remember what password you have entered it here. Now, along with this, we are going to enable this screenshot on remote admin as well as the cam shot on remote admin. So these two options we are going to enable. Now the IP address that we need to use to connect this tablet to home assistant, you can see it here wherein we have this remote admin for local network. So the IP address that is mentioned here, we are going to use this IP address inside home assistant. Now these are all the settings that we need to do. So let's go back to our dashboard. Now, once you're here, it will show you the list of permissions that it needs such that it can take control of this tablet. So once you click on OK, you have to go through this bunch of allow permissions such that fully kiosk app can get the permissions that it needs to operate on this tablet. So once you complete all these permissions, you will come back to this dashboard and then you will get to see this dashboard screen. 
Now, most of these options that we set right now requires a plus license. But however, you can always try out these options without the plus license. The only thing that you will get to see is this watermark telling you that the plus license is not activated on the dashboard. Now, you can always try out all these options before buying the Fully Kiosk Plus license. And then once you are satisfied, you can buy the license from the Fully Kiosk website, which is a little bit cheaper than buying it from the app directly. So now what we're going to do is we are going to now connect the tablet using Fully Kiosk browser integration to Home Assistant. So for this, I'm going to go to settings and I'm going to go to devices and services. And then I'm going to click on add integrations and I'm going to search for Fully Kiosk browser. Now here I'm going to enter the IP address that we had seen inside the remote administration settings and I'm then going to enter the password that we had specified there. Once you do that, click on submit and now the tablet is connected to my home assistant using the fully kiosk browser integration so let's go ahead and see what we can see inside this device now and then we have all these options that are available from our fully kiosk browser integration so first of all we have this media player with which we can place our media on the tablet then we have the option to turn off and turn on the screen here then we also have this sensors such as we have this front camera so right now you can see me from here and this is what we have right now then you can also see the screenshot of what is currently visible on the tablet then you have this notifier such that you can send some text message notifications on the tablet so that's also another good feature now along with this we have these configurations options such that we can set the motion detection off or we can reload the start URL. You can also restart the browser or you can restart the entire device also using this option. Now, these are some of the configurations. Now, here are some of the diagnostic options that we have. That is, we can see here the battery level, the current URL that it is showing right now and whether the device admin is on as well as the other options such as the amount of free memory that is available and if the device is plugged in or not. So now what we're going to do is we are going to look at some of the battery optimization options inside the app as well as look at some of the automations that we can do in order to maintain the battery life of this tablet. Otherwise, if this tablet keeps on charging all the time, we will lose its battery life. So first thing what we're going to do, we are going to do a simple automation. So first thing we are going to go to this settings here and we are going to add a new automation. Let me create a new automation and here I'm going to select the entity that is going to be a numeric state one and here i'm going to select battery and here i'm going to select the tablet's battery now here i'm setting the value as 90 such that if the battery value is above 90 this automation will get triggered and then what i'm going to do is i have connected this tablet with a smart plug and i'm going to turn off the smart plug so i'm going to select device here and then here i'm going to select the matter plug that I have connected and then I'm going to turn off the matter plug. So this is one of the automations that I will create here. So now this will get triggered when the battery level is above 90%. It will turn off this matter plug that is actually connected to this tablet to power this tablet. Now I'm going to create yet another automation by clicking on duplicate here and here instead of above, I'm going to remove this and I'm going to say if it falls below 10%, then I'm going to turn on this matter plug. I'm going to save this and I'm going to call this as turn on dashboard. Now I created these two separate automations. You can always combine them together in two different conditions. But just to keep things simple, I have separated out both these automations. Now let's look at some of the options that we have in the fully kiosk browser to optimize the battery. So now in the fully kiosk browser app on the tablet, we are going to access the settings by swiping on the left here. Now we are going to scroll down to motion detection settings and here we are going to turn off this motion detection setting completely. Now why we are doing this? Because in order to detect motion, it makes use of the camera and the camera obviously will drain some amount of battery. Now remember this one thing is that after disabling this option, you will not get to see the camera view from the tablet inside your home assistant that we had just seen before. So that is one of the drawbacks. Now instead of using this inbuilt motion detection, I would prefer having one of this human presence sensor from 
zone off or this PIR sensor from third reality in order to detect if there is some kind of a motion then we can have an automation such that it turns on the screen when it detects some kind of motion and turns it off if there is no motion being detected. Now if you don't have these sensors you can always buy these sensors with the links that are present into the description below. Now in case if you don't want to buy these sensors and you want to use this in build motion detection you can turn on this option and then you can set the detector frame rates to right now which is set to 5 and then you can change this to even a lower value. Along with this what we are going to do is we are going to also set the detect faces option. So whenever it detects a face it will consider it as some kind of a motion and trigger the motion detection here. Now next we have this option wherein it can turn off the screen when there is darkness. Now this will be a useful option in the night when there is no light source and then it will turn off this screen for us. Now finally we have this option to turn on the screen when it detects motion based on the above options that we have set. Now for this option to work we also have to set the screen off type in the device management settings. So let's go back to the device management settings here and here what we are going to do is we are going to set some kind of screen off time. Zero means that the screen will be always off. Right now I'm setting it to 20 such that after 20 seconds it will turn off the screen. Now with these settings what we have done here is that if it detects any kind of motion it will turn on the screen and if there is no motion then the screen will turn off based on this screen off time. Now if you are going to make use of this motion detection mechanism then bear in mind that you will have to be within 50 centimeters from the screen so that the face is detected and it then turns on the screen. Now these were some of the battery optimization techniques that we just saw. Now let's look at some of the fun part that we can do using this fully kiosk browser app. So first thing what we will look at is how we can launch a dashboard when we give a command say using the voice assistant. So for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a simple automation here. So let me go to automations, create new automation. And here I'm going to say sentence. And I'm going to say like show energy dashboard. And then in the actions, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and search for fully kiosk and I'm going to select this load URL. And then here I'm going to select the device that is my tablet and then I'm going to specify the URL that I want it to open. So let me open the energy dashboard here and I'm going to copy this and paste it here. So I'm going to save this and I'm going to call this as energy dashboard sentence. And I'm going to save this now. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to give a voice command. Hey Jarvis, show energy dashboard. And as you can see, the automation has triggered here and I can see the energy dashboard on my screen right now. So using this mechanism, we can now load any URL on our tablet using the fully kiosk browser app. Now let's go ahead and do something more fun wherein we are going to make use of the tablet speakers to play some music. So for this, I'm going to make use of music assistant. Now, if you have not integrated music assistant inside home assistant, then I have a video linked here wherein I've shown you how you can integrate music assistant and play some music. Now, today we'll be making use of music assistant here and we will integrate this tablet as a media player inside music assistant first. So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this home assistant media players and then I'm going to click on this drop down and I'm going to select my tablet and then I'm going to go ahead and save this here. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to settings and create an automation here. So I'm going to go to automation, create new automation, and I'm going to say sentence here and the trigger, and I'm going to say play music. And then in the do section, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to select media player, and then I'm going to select play media. Now here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my media player. So I'm going to scroll down here and if you see, you'll get these two media players here. One from the one that was inside Home Assistant and this one is the one that came from Music Assistant. So you have to select the second one here and then afterwards you're going to pick a media. So I'm going to click on this and here you can select either the track or the playlist. Now in this case, I'm going to select a playlist and I'm going to select this My Playlist and I'm going to say pick here. And with this, let's go ahead and save this automation. And now let's give it a try. Hey Jarvis, play music. Done. And if you see, the automation is triggered and the music is right now playing. 
So right now I'm playing the music on my dashboard and let me go ahead and pause this here. So this is a way that you can now play music on your tablet using this integration. Now there's also this option wherein you can play some video here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to play a sample video. So let me go to developer tools and actions and here I'm going to select media player play media. Now here I'm going to select my device that is Galaxy Tab A which is actually my tablet right now and then I'm going to specify the content ID and the content type. Now how do you get this content ID and content type? What I usually do is I open this automation. So let's go to automations and scenes, create automation and then in this action section I select media player, play media and then from here I select my tablet, pick media and then I get access to all my media files. Now I'm going to click on my media and I'm going to select this sample video. Now what I do is I go ahead and then click on edit YAML here and then here I get this content ID. So I copy this content ID and this content type and then I go ahead and paste it here. Now let's go ahead and trigger this and see how the video plays. So let me click here and then if you see here it is right now loading and the video is being played as of now this is the way that i have found that we can play the video and it can play in the full screen mode also so these are some of the fun things that you can do by integrating your tablet inside home assistant using fully kios browser app and then control a lot of the aspects on your dashboard so we just saw how we can control this tablet using home assistant as well as play some music on it now if you like this video make sure to hit that like button as well as hit that subscribe button for more such videos to come now if you want to support this channel there are links into the description below wherein you can buy me a coffee or you can support me via patreon till then take care and i will see you in my next one